Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer and Devotion on this Tuesday, July the 12th. I thank God for you and for each prayer warrior who joins us uh, throughout the day. Um, we have many things to pray about today, but first of all, I want to share with you a praise report. Um, we have a praise report for Kathy Crow, who was moved out of the ICU yesterday and is recovering well from her open heart surgery. And we want to continue uh, praying for her and others who have heart issues, including uh, Joyce Fisk, who had a recent heart attack, Sister Patty Arnold, Cheryl LaChance, Jimmy Warren, Mike Sappington, Michelle Strain's mother, Jane Parrott's nephew, Blaine, and Kenny Prenzel. In our other prayer request today, uh, let's pray for some unspoken needs, the Barra Archer family, the Jones family, Carmen's friend Randy and his wife and young son need our continued prayers. We want to pray for our North American missionaries, especially our church plant in Branson, Missouri, headed up by pastors Kyle and Kennedy Lloyd. And of course, our global missionaries in Ukraine uh, need our prayers today. The Tamios and Pattersons are praying for the war there to end. We have many spiritual needs to pray about. Let's pray for those suffering from addictions. Uh, Dawson and William uh, need our prayers. Pam Davies needs strength to take care of her husband. The Rush family, the um, uh, Chandler family, Grace's circle of friends, and Grace's best friends family especially needing prayer for wholeness and peace in relationships. We're praying for uh, Jenny Perkins' sister, Lisa, who has mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. Uh, the Rush family has an unspoken need today. Let's remember Matt and Michaela, Mark and Caitlin, Dee Dee Sealert's biological father and his family. Connie Graham is in need of a financial miracle. Marsh and Britt are needing continued prayers for their family. We're praying for baby G's adoption. Annette and Dave needing continued healing in their marriage. Johnny Nelson's family, Sister Pam's family, Karen Sampson and family, Carrie Jones and family. Uh, Maury needs prayer for her finances. Rose Brown's granddaughter and her husband and kids are in need of a miracle. Debbie Biddick's daughters and their families, J.R. Johnson, Beulah's family, Regina Marlin's family, Alan, Cheryl's family member, Alicia, Charles Gossett, the Sappington family, Judy and Mike Williams' family, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Mingo Job Corps students and alumni. I, I spoke to the um, staff at Job Corps yesterday. They still only have about 30 students that are on campus and uh, still are not loosening the restrictions there for them to attend church services. So let's continue to pray about that situation as well as for our Mingo Residential Care Center. Um, spoke to the staff there yesterday and we were closed down there for another week as they had new COVID positives on Saturday. Kristen's Uncle Monty uh, needs continued prayer for both his physical and spiritual needs. We have many with health needs today in addition to those we mentioned with heart issues. Uh, we have Judy Williams brother, Phyllis Robinette, J.R. Johnson, Wilda Morrison, Shirley Garner, Chloe Isaac, Tom Shannon, Gary Nelson, Devin Huff, Mike and Tony Hodge, Les and Patrice Wells, John Belter, Meredith, Jim Johnson, Nicole, Jimmy Holden, and Regina Bishop, all with physical needs. Sister Pam Pulliam is suffering with sinusitis. Uh, we have many who are in need of continued recovery. Uh, Scott Smith recovered from emergency surgery due to intestinal blockage. Steve Wilkerson had a recent cancer surgery. Jody Smith's mother was in a car accident and is recovering from several injuries uh, in that car accident. Donna Robinson has been recovering from surgery. Uh, Kathy Crow, as I mentioned, and Pastor Mickey Lewis are both recovering from open heart surgery. Wally Nyland had a recent repair of herniated and blocked intestine. Nathan Van Ingen is recovering from cancer surgery. Jim Connor had a recent kidney transplantation. Ashley Johnson still recovering from gunshot wounds or gunshot wound to the head. Leslie Sutton is recovering from surgery on her leg and Eric Williams from surgery on his ankle. Both have been going through rehab uh, to regain their uh, function. 
Brother Huey, Tina's mother, Sheila Sappington, and Carmen's cousins, Kelly and Shannon, are all recovering from a stroke. Those who are battling cancer include Diane Escher, Ari Bowers, Marcia's friend's grandparents, Carmen's friend Sherry, Claire, Kay, Sylvia Larimore, Dennis Phelps, Kathy Benson, Michael Bolin, Stephanie Thompson, Michelle Strain's sister Cindy, Edie Percival, Kathy Burks, Philip Randall, Monica Harmon, Alice Elizabeth, Carmen's neighbor Eddie, Joey Etheridge, Alicia Piero, Dwayne Lewis, Joey Burke, Tony Nelson, Scott Lucia, Belinda Bauer, Christy Smith, a lady here in Puxico with stage 4 breast cancer, Del Bishop, Hugh's wife, and Marsha Moore has a co-worker whose brother has cancer. We're also praying for Linda Fox, Kathy Williamson, both battling cancer. Carmen's sister Tracy and also Riley Marks, Marty Dallot, and Sarah Stroop need healing of MS. Russ and Tim both need healing of Parkinson's. My dad and my mother-in-law uh, and Marsha Moore's mother-in-law, Vivian, are all needing healing of Parkinson's. Chris Ramey needs healing of her knees. Renee needs healing of her hips and knees. Tasha Ray suffered a recent knee injury and has an appointment with an orthopedic specialist this month to assess the degree of damage. June Coffer and Rose Brown need healing of arthritis. Those who are suffering with back pain include Pam Williams' daughter, Jenny, Lori Gravel, Michael Parrott, Brianna Williams, Charles Davis, Cindy Page, Britt Moore, Melana Cummins, Terry Nelson, Bob O, Becky Wilson, Carolyn Rogers, and Tammy Lawson. We're praying for Rose Brown, Evie, Charlie Davis, Brother Pulliam, Cheryl LaChance, Jimmy Warren, Kristen's neighbor Natalie, J.R. Johnson, Becca and her mother Christina, Emily Stanley, Tim Workman, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Christian Carr, Titus Dornbach, and myself all needing healing of diabetes. Those with stomach issues include Olivia, Kristen's neighbor Natalie, Regina Marlin's granddaughter Aubrey, Heather Spence, and Michael Parrott, Johnny Nelson, Beth Wheatley, Marsha Moore, Melana Cummins, all need healing of migraines. Marsha also has a co-worker whose son suffers from migraines. Cheryl Chance's family member and Sue Helton Morris's brother need healing of head injuries, uh, the issues involved with that. AJ's daughter has spinal fluid that's been leaking into her brain. I have not received an update on that need. Let's continue to pray and continue to pray for Sister Mara Sullivan, who suffers with autoimmune disease and lupus. We're praying for LaVon, Michael and Grover Strachner, Kendra Ortiz, and Robbie North of chronic lung conditions, and also those battling COVID. At last word, these included Ron Asher, Judy Williams' mom, uh, brother and sister Purser, and the outbreak at Mingo RCF. Chuck Lorre is on hospice care. Uh, Arlo's grandfather has been very close to death, and the family's been asking us to pray that he passes quickly and peacefully as they don't want to see him suffer anymore, and he's ready to meet the Lord. We're praying for um, Arlo himself, this child who um, suffered uh, terrible injuries and was miraculously spared uh, when he was run over accidentally by a truck, and uh, he continues to recover, but let's continue praying for Arlo, for also Myra, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker battling childhood cancer, Tano Lopez with spina bifida, Abel Ray, with PKU syndrome, and Abram Page, who was born with GNAL1 disorder. We certainly have much uh, to pray about, and I'm glad that I have people who are always uh, willing to pray with me, and I welcome each of you this morning who are doing just that. God bless you this morning, Johnny and Carmen. Uh, we thank uh, God for you and for the good report that Tracy has recovered from COVID. Uh, thank the Lord. Sherry miraculously found housing. That's a wonderful report. And we are so thankful to hear that report of an answered uh, prayer today. Uh, Sister Pam is feeling 100% today, so we can take her off of our prayer list. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, good to see you, Kristen. Good to see you this morning. Mom and Dad with us and Judy and Sherman. Uh, what a wonderful team that we have and I know I say that every morning and you know what I mean it 
every time that I say it. God has blessed us with people who have a burden for prayer. And I want to continue talking to you about um, just that and the connection to prayer, uh, between prayer and some other important things that bring revival. And we all know that our world uh, certainly needs a heaven-sent revival, a move of God will change things that nothing else can change. You know, this world was created, and the Bible says it was without form, and it was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But then the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, and out of all that chaos, when the Spirit of God moved, things began to drastically change. And I believe there's drastic change that is going to happen today as we continue to pray. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Here in this scripture, spelled out for us very plainly, are the four steps toward spiritual healing and renewal. Humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. And God said, then will I hear and will forgive and will heal the land. Today, we're going to focus on just the first step. And I'm going to get through this as quickly as possible, knowing that time is of the essence here. Uh, the first step, such an important step that it is, because without the first step, none of the other steps are ever going to be taken. But this scripture says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. That word if sure is a huge word. It only have two letters in it. It impacts everything that's connected to it. Any statement that starts off with an if is always true in reverse. So we could also read that scripture this way. If my people which are called by my name will not humble themselves and will not pray and will not seek my face and will not turn from their wicked ways, then I will not hear from heaven and will not forgive their sin and will not heal their land. It really is that simple. The solution is obvious. We just have to decide if what we want is worth what is required to obtain it and I don't believe the outcome is determined by steps two, three, and four. The outcome is determined at step number one, which is what determines whether or not there will be a step two, a step three, and a step four. So we must humble ourselves. And when you think of that, you know, what does it mean to humble ourselves? It's really hard to define the term uh, humility. And a lot of times we just walk all around it. But the meaning of that word being vague and elusive is because humility does not announce itself. If it did, it would not be humility, would it? If a person goes around announcing to everyone that they're humble, then they're immediately giving away the fact that they're full of pride. As someone said, they're humble and proud of it. Um, but humility is best defined as what the proud aren't doing. Since humility will not tell you what it is, it, it is undercover. It is not announcing itself. The best way to define humility is to just look at what the proud are doing and do the opposite. You'll never grasp the meaning of humility by just watching a humble person uh, because what they do in secret, you're not going to know the depth and extent of their walk. But if you want to get a firm grasp on humility, just watch someone who's proud. They're easy to spot. Proud always, pride always announces itself. Pride wants you to know about all of its accomplishments. Pride will always be trumpeting its achievements. So just observe the actions of someone who is full of pride and then do exactly the opposite. You'll be on the right track. So here it is. I've observed a lot of proud and haughty people over the years, so I'll save you some time and just tell you what proud people don't do. My number one observation, proud people don't pray much, at least in terms of what God sees as prayer. They may close their eyes and flap their gums and, and jaws when people are around, but trust me, it's strictly for point value. It's not true prayer because you must humble yourself to do that. If my people will humble themselves and pray, humbling yourself is the first step. If you don't humble yourself, you won't pray because prayer uh, ends up a lot of times being work. 
And I've never seen even one person truly touch the throne of God until they were first willing to humble themselves. Remember the publican and the Pharisee that went to the temple to pray. Only one of them actually accomplished anything that truly resembled prayer in God's eyes. The Pharisee was too proud to pray. He was only there to announce how great that he was. But today we come to humble ourselves and recognize how great our God is and how great our need is. And when we'll do that and, and emphasize our dependence upon him, that's the first step towards seeing the revival that God wants to give us. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's humble ourselves in the sight of God, knowing that he will lift us up. He will encourage. He will strengthen the day if we will truly depend upon him. Lord, we thank you and we depend upon you today. We recognize, God, that you are our only true source of healing, of renewal, of change in our lives, of deliverance. We cannot deliver ourselves. We cannot make our own way. We are not independent of you. We are not self-made. Lord, it is you who have made us and not we ourselves. And we depend upon you today, God, Lord, for your help, for your instruction, for your direction. And I pray that right now for each of these wonderful people that are praying with me and for these on our prayer list today. God, we're wanting to see your will accomplished. So many needs today that we bring before you, God, that we don't have solutions for. We don't have even good ideas, Lord. Your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Sometimes we think we have it figured out, Lord, but we must depend upon you because you see everything. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the beginning and the ending. You are the author and the finisher. And we trust in you this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, God. Oh, we bow before you today, God. We depend upon your every word. Hallelujah. Let your will be done today. We pray you would move in these unspoken needs for the Archer family and the Jones family. We pray for Carmen's friend Randy and his family today. We pray for our missionaries this morning. For Kyle and Kennedy Lloyd and Branson, God, open doors for that young church plant today. Move on their behalf. Lord, bless our global missionaries today. Lord, give them the answers that they need in their prayers today. We pray for the Tamias and the Pattersons and other missionaries and, and uh, uh, humanitarian aid workers in the area of Ukraine today, in Russia, in the surrounding nations. God, that you would bless and protect and help them. Lord, toward the great revival that you are desiring to give and that you are indeed a blessing with right now. We pray, God, that you would move in these spiritual and family needs. Lord, you've heard every name that we've called out today, and we lift them up to you, God, believing, Lord, for spiritual healing, for emotional healing. We believe, God, for change today in these lives. In Jesus' mighty name, oh, God, we trust you today. You are well able. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray, God, for these who have health needs, for Kristen's Uncle Monty, for Judy's brother, for Phyllis and J.R., for Wilda Morrison, for Shirley Garner, for Tom Shannon and Chloe Isaac, for Mike and Tony Hodge, for Devin Huff and Les and Patrice, John Belcher, Gary Nelson, Meredith, Jimmy Holden, Jim Johnson, Nicole, and Regina Bishop. Lord, move in these needs today, we pray. We pray for those who are recovering from recent surgeries and accidents and injuries of different types. We pray for Scott Smith and Steve Wilkerson, for Jody Smith's mother, for Donna Robinson, for Kathy Crow and Pastor Mickey Lewis, for Wally Nyland and Nathan Van Ingen, for Jim Connor and Ashley, for Leslie and Eric and Brother Huey, for Kelly and Shannon, for Tina's mother, and for Sheila Sappington. Lord, for each one that's battling cancer today, Lord, we proclaim that you are greater than any disease. There is nothing, Lord, that was not covered by the stripes that you took upon your back. Lord, you paid for our healing. Lord, you took every bruise upon yourself, every wound upon yourself, every mocking, every, every part of that trial and scourging. You did it all for us. And we thank you, God, for your healing touch today. In Jesus' name, those who have Parkinson's and MS, Lord, you're able to heal these diseases today. 
We trust in you. We pray for healing of these orthopedic problems today. Those who are suffering in their knees and hips and other joints today. Those with arthritis. Those suffering with back pain today. We believe for their healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray, God, for those uh, today suffering with diabetes. Uh, we believe for you to touch Christian and Titus today, Cindy and Lloyd, Tim and myself, uh, Emily Stanley, Becca and Christina, Jr. and Natalie, Jimmy and Cheryl, Brother Pulliam and Charlie, Evie and Rose today. God, you are the mighty God and you are our healer this morning. We pray, God, for those with stomach issues. Uh, Lord, touch Olivia Touch Christian's neighbor, Natalie. Touch Regina's granddaughter, Aubrey, Heather, and Michael, Lord. Give them relief today from these chronic stomach problems, uh, we pray. Lord, these suffering with migraine headaches, uh, we believe for their healing. We pray for Johnny and Beth and Marcia and Melena. We pray for Marcia's co-worker son today that he would receive healing in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for Cheryl's family member and Sue's brother today. Lord, we believe for their healing this morning of these head injuries. We pray for AJ's daughter, Lord, that you would touch her right now, that this uh, problem with the spinal fluid leak would be uh, solved today. We pray for Sister Sullivan for healing of lupus and autoimmune cerebritis. Uh, we pray for those with chronic lung conditions and those who are battling COVID today. God, that you would minister healing to them. Touch Ron. Touch Judy's mom. Touch our Mingo RCF residents uh, who are battling COVID. Brother and sister Purser today needs your touch. Uh, we pray for those on hospice care, for Chuck Laurie, for Arlo's grandfather. God, we pray for peace in these situations. Uh, hallelujah. We pray, God, for help for the family as well as those that are suffering from these terminal illnesses today. We pray, God, for these children, Lord, for their healing. Brantley and Elsie, Abram and Abel, Tano, Myra, Lorele, Jenna, and Tucker, and Arlo. God, we believe for complete restoration for them today. We pray today, God, for Joyce Fisk and for Cheryl Chance, for Sister Patty Arnold, for Jimmy Warren, these Lord with heart issues today, Mike Sappington and Michelle Strain's mother, Blaine and Kenny. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you are able today, Lord, to just totally rework uh, uh, whatever the issues are with their heart, whatever's causing the problem, not just the symptoms, but the root of it today. And we believe today for your touch. And we ask now, God, that you would direct us, that you would help us, God, to humble ourselves, that you would help us, God, Lord, to pursue you fully, not just to come with a list of needs each day, but, Lord, to forge a relationship with you that's deeper than we've ever had in our lives. Oh, God, help me to be what you want me to be today. Lord, forgive me, God, of my shortcomings. Forgive me of my short-sightedness. Forgive me, Lord, for not looking at things the way that you look at them. Help me to see things, Lord, through your word, through the lens of your word today and the lens of your promises. And I'll give you the praise and the glory. And this team gives you glory and praise today for all that you're doing. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, the name of all power and glory today. It all belongs to you. We pray that your name will be magnified through our prayers today as you bless, as you deliver, as you heal, as you save. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for praying uh, with us. And I see others have been joining us as we've been praying. Let's continue to believe together. I apologize for that annoying uh, sound that's been in the background this morning. And I've been a little distracted thinking about it because it started at the very beginning and I thought it was some kind of alarm. There it goes again. And I just now realized what it is. It's just a low battery uh, on a device that I forgot to plug up last night. And now it's um, running down and telling me I need to plug it in. And when it first happened, it really startled me. I thought maybe something was going on in the house, maybe a carbon monoxide alert or something going on but it really was insignificant. And that's the way it is with so many things that we get sidetracked about. Uh, they're really insignificant, but they're vying for our attention. And today there'll be distractions in your life trying to pull you away from God. But be strong, be courageous, uh, stay in tune with God, 
and depend upon him. If we'll humble ourselves in his sight, he will definitely raise us up. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow right here on Facebook Live, Lord willing, at 7.30 a.m. Let's join together once again at that time.